This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 17, Matrix Transformations. Our objectives for this lecture are to find the domain and codomain of a given matrix transformation, apply a matrix transformation to a given vector, find a vector in the domain of a matrix transformation corresponding to a given image, and determine whether a given vector is in the range of a given matrix transformation. We've been talking about the relationship between the matrix equation ax equals b and the vector equation x1a1 plus x2a2 plus 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 xnan equals b, where the a vectors are the columns of the matrix A, and we've talked about how those two equations represent the same relationship. But as we're going to see, matrix equations don't just arise from systems of linear equations. We're going to be talking about functions in this lecture, so let's talk about our basic function notation. We're typically going to write a letter that represents the name of the function, in this case f, and then a colon, and then two variables separated by an arrow. The first variable represents the domain of the function, those are the things that we can plug into the function, and the second variable represents the codomain of the function, those are the things that we could possibly get out of the function. In this course, our functions are going to have domains and codomains that are sets of vectors. Specifically, in this lecture, we're going to be talking about something called a matrix transformation. So when we have an m by n matrix A, the matrix transformation corresponding to A is the function whose domain is Rn and whose codomain is Rm, and it's defined by the rule that t of the vector x, t of x, is A times x. And the domain of t is Rn, where n is the number of columns of A, and that's because for a times x to be defined, for us to be able to plug a vector x into this function, the number of entries in the vector x has to match the number of columns of a. Now the codomain of this function, the set of things that we can get out of this function, is rm. And this is because when we multiply a times a vector x, what we get is a linear combination of the columns of a. a has m rows, so the columns of a have m entries, and so any linear combination of those columns would also have m entries, and that's why the codomain of this function is rm. Let's take a look at an example. So here we have a, which is a 2 by 3 matrix, 2 rows and 3 columns, which means that its domain is r3 and its codomain is r2. And here we're being asked to evaluate t of the vector negative 2, 1, 5. And notice that that vector has 3 entries, which means that vector is in our domain, which means we can evaluate t of that vector. Okay, so what do we do? Well, that vector that we're plugging in is our vector x, and our function has the formula t of x equals a times x, which means we're being asked for a times this vector. So how do we multiply a matrix by a vector? Well, we go across the rows of the matrix and down the entries of our vector, multiplying and adding, and when we do that, we get the result 2, negative 9. That result has two entries, and our codomain is r2, so that matches with what we said earlier. Let's talk about some vocabulary. Any function that goes from Rn to Rm is called a transformation. So the transformations that we're talking about in this lecture are a specific kind of transformation, which are transformations defined by a formula t of x equals ax for some matrix A. If we have a vector in our domain, we say that the image of that vector under t, the image of that vector under our transformation, that's just a fancy name for t of x. And if we take all of the images, all of the actual outputs that we get from plugging vectors into this function, we collect those together into one big set. That set is called the range, or confusingly, the image of t. So this is a subset of the codomain. Now, depending on the transformation t, it's possible that that range is everything. It's possible that when we plug vectors into our transformation t, we get all vectors in Rm. And we'll analyze this possibility in a future lecture. Let's look at another example. So here we have a matrix A. This time the matrix is 3 by 2, which means that the domain is R2 and the codomain is R3. We've got several parts to this one. The first one is asking us to find the image of negative 4, 5 under t. Remember that that's just a fancy way of asking for t of negative 4, 5. And t of negative 4, 5 just means A times negative 4, 5. So we multiply the matrix by the vector, again going across the rows of our matrix and down the entries of our vector, multiplying and adding as we go, and we get the result negative 17, 20, negative 20. For this part of the problem, we're being asked to find a vector x such that t of x equals 3, negative 6, 5 halves. So we're given the output and we're asked for the input. So essentially they're asking us to solve the equation t of x equals 3, negative 6, 5 halves. 
but t of x is a times x. So that's asking us to solve the equation ax equals 3, negative 6, 5 halves. That's a matrix equation, and the way that we solve a matrix equation is by setting up and row reducing an augmented matrix. So when we do that, we get the solution x1 equals 1 half and x2 equals negative 3 halves. Now we're being asked to find a vector, so it makes sense to write this as a vector. So we write our answer as x equals the vector 1 half negative 3 halves. And sometimes we'll use the word pre-image here to say that x is the pre-image of the vector that we were given, 3, negative 6, 5 halves. So 3, negative 6, 5 halves is the image of 1 half negative 3 halves, and 1 half negative 3 halves is the pre-image of 3, negative 6, 5 halves. There's just ways to describe the relationship between these two vectors. One more part to this one. So once again, we're given a vector in our codomain, a vector with three entries in this case, and this time we're asked, is b in the image of t? Or in other words, can we write 1, 2, 3, that vector, as t of x for some vector x? Well, we're going to solve this one in the same way. We set up and row reduce an augmented matrix because we're essentially being asked to solve a matrix equation. But this time, when we row reduce our matrix, we get a pivot in the last column, which means that that matrix equation is inconsistent. But we should always make sure to directly answer the original question. We are being asked, is this vector b in the image of t? Since this equation has no solutions, that means that no, b is not in the image of t. Finally, let's take a look at some examples where we try to visualize some of these transformations. For this first example, we're looking at what's called a projection. This matrix A has domain R3 and codomain R3. It's a 3x3 three three matrix. And what this transformation does is it takes a vector in R3 and replaces the z component with 0. And so what we're seeing here is the red vector is being plugged into the function, and the black vector is the image of that vector. And so you can think of the black vector as the shadow of that red vector from three-dimensional space into the xy plane. Here are a couple of examples of transformations from R2 to R2. Here, to visualize the effect of this transformation, we're starting with a geometric shape, in this case the letter F, and the blue shape is the image of the original red shape. So what we're seeing is what's called a shear transformation. If A is the matrix 1, B, 0, 1, reading from left to right, then that is what's called a horizontal shear. But if the matrix is 1, 0, B, 1, again reading from left to right, then this is a vertical shear transformation. But even just looking at transformations from R2 to R2, if we vary the entries of our matrix, we can get all sorts of different transformations. You can see an example here. And these are going to be combinations of reflections, scaling, and rotations. And transformations in higher dimensions can be even more complicated and harder to visualize. One special case is when A is the matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, and in this case T of X equals AX, that transformation is what's called the identity transformation. This transformation has the property that T of X is just X. You can see the calculation here. If we plug a vector X1, X2 into this transformation, we just get back the exact vector that we plugged in, X1, X2. And in this case, T is the identity transformation, and A, this 2 by 2 matrix, is called the identity matrix. We're going to see this again a little bit later in the course. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.